it's really hard to look at red light the same way ever again when you understand that red light might actually be talking to our cells and it might actually be organizing ways for our cells to talk to each other. We've just been looking at red light in this metabolic fashion that probably has some accurate components to it, but we're starting to see more and more literature coming out suggesting that red light and light therapy in general could be more of a quantum thing. Now, before I lose you, I'm gonna make this very basic, but I will dabble a little bit in some of the potential like photon and kind of quantum mechanics pieces of this. But I also wanna make it known that I am not a quantum physicist. I am not a quantum biologist. I would love to interview more of them because I feel like it's the future. We're starting to understand that light, both sunlight, UVB, red light, near infrared, seem to operate on our tissues and our cells in a far more advanced way than we ever thought. So let me first open this by talking about what we thought red light was doing and what might still be accurate, but there might just be a much bigger piece to the puzzle that we've been missing. So essentially it's been thought that red light absorbs through our tissue, which it does, photons, you know, these 660 nanometer wavelength, absorbs through our skin, gets into our mitochondria, goes into uh, what's called cytochrome C oxidase, the last complex of our mitochondria where we produce energy, and it essentially makes energy more efficient. That's basically what the gist of it was. It forces out some of the nitric oxide and it allows ATP, energy within our body, to be formed easier. That makes sense. That's why it works so well for recovery. That's why it works so well for the brain. People use it on their brain because it helps brain energetics. There's no mistaking that red light works and it works really well. It's also very anti-inflammatory. But there's been some holes in that. Like for example, light can still produce some energy, sometimes independent of a mitochondria. So there's like this other element of, is there a quantum sort of photon element to it? And that's where the research is getting fascinating. And I wanna just enlighten people on a new way to look at how we could be getting energy from light. This isn't take it to the bank stuff. This isn't even, it's beyond theory. It's more so, hey, let's start looking here. The first thing I wanna talk about that makes you look at red light differently is something called photon tunneling. Okay, this is a real thing. In this case, red light and near infrared red light could be penetrating our tissues and actually helping electrons tunnel in sort of a quantum way to produce energy. So what does that mean? So our mitochondria works in this way where electrons from the food that we eat will pass through different stages or complexes of the mitochondria to ultimately produce energy at the site of cytochrome C oxidase, which is why we thought red light worked so well. However, now we're seeing that red light and near infrared light might allow electrons to tunnel and actually sort of be, well, I don't want to say two places at once, but essentially teleport to that cytochrome C oxidase. How is that even possible? Bottom line is there's quantum mechanics behind this that are far beyond my pay grade, but essentially the photons in the light are altering and not making the chemistry different, but actually making the actual universe of our body different. So the light is allowing for electrons to immediately create energy. And there's some mechanisms and some theories behind that. And I'll link out the stuff down below if you wanna look at it and look into it more. Again, I don't wanna go beyond my pay grade. I can just go beyond or talk about where I'm interested and where I'm kinda of going with some of this. But there's also this element of coherent biophoton emission. And it's just like it sounds. It's a, basically a smart biophoton that is emitted by a cell. What does that mean? So believe it or not, our cells emit light. They emit biophotons. Now, it's not enough to light up a room. Well, maybe it is if you combine them, right? There's a lot of energy built up in our body. There's something like a lightning bolt's worth of energy in our body. It's wild, right? The quantum biology world will just blow your mind. But again, I'm coming back to the source of like, why is red light working? Why, how do we explain why we feel so different when we use it, okay? So essentially what it's doing in that sense is it's allowing for the cells to emit potentially more biophotons. But what we're starting to look at is that these biophotons might allow cells and tissues to synchronize and communicate with one another. So perhaps they're communicating through these, this light that is able to quantum tunnel and move instantaneously. So essentially, that's why you could put red light in one area of your body 
and have a potential systemic effect. So for example, uh, I use red light therapy on my back a lot. Like I use this thing called a Kinian device, which is like a laser uh, concentrated red light. I put it around my back and it really helps my back. But I noticed that once my back feels better, everything else kind of comes into alignment. How do I explain that? I can't necessarily explain it, except for the fact that maybe when my back's not in pain, I'm having less stress, less inflammation, and there's definitely a practical application with that, or a practical uh, explanation, I should say. But when you look at it from sort of this biophoton angle and the coherence, essentially our cells are all communicating with each other via all kinds of quantum levels, biological levels, metabolic levels, signaling device, hormones, a lot of different levels. But this biophoton level could be something that makes us feel so much different when we use red or near-infrared light. For what it's worth, I'll also link out to that Kinian device because I know people will comment and ask me for it. I've been using it for like a year and a half. If you do have pain, just kind of side note, really helpful for that because it's red light that's concentrated into a laser. These guys are from like the light technology world. They're really smart people that have made this. So if concentrated 660 nanometer wavelength light red light and near-infrared light into laser form so you can penetrate. So we already know red light works like when it absorbs your skin, but if you can concentrate it and get it into localized areas like your knees, your back. Again, I use it on my back. I've got six ruptured discs in my back and it's helped me probably more than anything else, quite frankly. It helps me more than a lot of other things that I can even do with my diet or exercise. It's helped out probably just from an anti-inflammatory perspective. Anyway, bottom line is I'll put a link down below that can get you, I think it's 15% off uh, through Kinion, which is great. They're a great company. So link in the top line of the description. Now there was a biophysicist by the name of Fritz Allen Pop that did a lot of talking about sort of the biophotons in this. So I encourage people to look at him, like look at his stuff. He's since passed away, but he's got some really interesting stuff. A lot of it's been debunked, but it hasn't been debunked in the way of, hey, Fritz was wrong. It's more so like, hey, no, it's probably more like this. Okay, remember like quantum energy, like this is a very complicated thing. But there's another person maybe you've heard of before, because I know Dr. Jack Cruz has talked about him before, uh, Dr. Gerald Pollack. Now he is highly controversial. Okay, he's a bit extreme in some of the stuff that he's talked about and some of his stuff has been proven wrong with his like fourth phase of water discussion. What this fourth phase of water discussion is, is that essentially surface tension, water, proves that there is an additional fourth phase of water. What does that mean in human terms? It means that we actually create structural water in our body. Do you know that? Like we have fat and we have hydrogen, and then we breathe oxygen, we actually make water in our body. It's crazy. First you heard that we're making light in our body, now you're hearing that we're making water in our body? Like, has Thomas lost his mind? No, I'm just ever increasingly fascinated with the human body. So essentially, we make this structured water, but this water is very unique in that it typically only wants to go to places that are hydrophilic. And what that means is this water will only gravitate to places that have um, an affinity for water. So it doesn't form in large amounts, but it can form these like sort of layers. And it's a unique structure type of water, uh, almost like ice, but in a fluid form, if that makes sense, which don't even worry about understanding what that means. So what does that have to do with red light? Well, Dr. Gerald Pollack's work he kind of said, wait a minute, maybe our cells are more like batteries and this water can hold a charge. So what if red light and near-infrared light was essentially charging, adding these photons to this structural water that was acting like a battery to our cells? So when you look at it like this, you're like, wait a minute, we have all this structured water that could be holding a charge that we get from light talking about like cosmically crazy stuff. And it doesn't mean that, hey, we can be breatharians and not eat food and just breathe air and light. In fact, if you were totally to subscribe to this theory entirely, it would discount the, the reason for oxygen, right? So we obviously need oxygen for a number of things, but light could just be one of our sources of energy. I think that we forget how potentially photosynthetic we are because we get so narrow-minded in much of our research in simple metabolic function and yada yada. There's just a lot more to it. And again, the purpose of this video is not to educate beyond anything else. I am not a biophysicist, but I always like to let you know where I'm going and I want people to start looking at things a little bit differently because the metabolic ideas of red light and infrared, like those are pretty flushed out. Like we know there's something going on, but now we're starting to understand a different element. There's one more interesting thing though. 
There was a randomized control trial, a human study published in neuroscience that was looking at the effects of near-infrared and red light, essentially in this case it was lasers, transcranial. Okay, They were using it over the brain. And what they found is that not only was this improving brain energetics, but it was improving cognitive function and emotional stability. Like, so when you go back to sort of the photon, the biophoton thing, like the ability for the brain to communicate and recalibrate. So we've heard people, like even in metaphysical realms, and metaphysical spaces, I should say, like people that are into that stuff, they'll talk about light therapy. Well, there's something there, but when it goes down that rabbit hole, people start discounting it. But this was an RCT, like a legit randomized control trial. The theory behind this whole piece was that it increased mitochondrial ATP in astrocytes and neurons. So at a neurological level, it was increasing brain energetics. So they didn't go inside the brain and say, hey, the light is activating cytochrome C oxidase and creating more ATP. They just knew that there was more ATP and they knew that it was lighting up the brain and it was working. So they didn't have the mechanism flushed out other than the fact that it was working. So when you're talking about the brain and you're talking about astrocytes and neurons, you're talking about the nervous system, it could very well make sense that light is actually helping these cells communicate and helping the nervous system in a way recalibrate. So it's sort of this tissue talking, cell talking that I'm talking about here. So does this just completely make it so that red light therapy is just so beyond reach in terms of the science that you just have to trust it? In some ways, yes because we have seen changes in brainwave states with red light. We've seen changes in physical states with red light. We've seen energetics change with red light. We have seen, even with the administration of methylene blue, which is an electron donor and carrier, we have seen that red light enhances the effects of it. So it's definitely working metabolically, but I think we need to give more credit to what it's doing electrically and at a quantum level. As always, keep it locked to hear my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.